networking with humanoid control. I will be doing that using photon networking, but it would be just as easy to use Unity networking. You will see that. Uh, I start with a very simple environment. I imported humanoid control VR and photon networking into this scene and I created uh, a very simple networking scene uh, as a starting point for my uh, instruction. I already set up Photon with uh, all the app IDs, so uh, I can now concentrate on the scene itself. What I will be doing is add the standard humanoid control prefab into the scene to have a, a very simple uh, uh, single player setup. And we want to turn this into a networked setup. First thing we need to do for that is go to the edit menu preferences and select the humanoid preferences. Here we will see the networking support and you can set that to Unity networking and photon networking. As I'm using the second one I will change that into photon networking and you will see that the compiler will recompile the scripts to add the photon networking support to that. So if we go back to the humanoid now you will see that there is an additional uh, parameter for the uh, humanoid control script called the remote avatar. The remote avatar is the avatar the other players will see when you are in a multiplayer see a scene. Uh, so the avatar you will see here, the single player avatar, is actually the avatar you will see yourself while the others will see the remote avatar. And I can make that clear by changing this avatar to a different one. So I remove that delete it and then I go to the characters you will find the first person avatar which I can drop onto the humanoid control uh, the humanoid game object and you will see this avatar doesn't have a head which is convenient for first person players so now we have a humanoid with a headless first person and a normal head uh, avatar uh, for the other clients also take care that the remote avatar, you can change that too, but it is always it should always be in a resources file, uh, folder. As you can see here, it's in the resources file, folder of the humanoid demo. So now we only have to do one additional thing to turn it into uh, a multiplayer setup. And for that, I need to drag another prefab into the scene which is found in the humanoid prefabs networking section and it's called the networking starter. Basically networking starter takes, uh, takes uh, care of everything for networking. It spawns the humanoid PU, uh, PUN, PUN uh, prefab into the scene and that will observe all the humanoids in the scene and communicate them, sync them to all the uh, remote avatars including grabbing objects, changing avatars, uh, etc. So basically we are now ready and have our multiplayer set up. You don't see much because there's only one player so I will make a, a build which will act as a second player. So for that I'm going to the build settings. I have my scene into the list of scenes to build and I'm going to build that and I will call it the NW folder. Oh, it doesn't exist yet. Okay. New folder NW and I will select that one. So now it will generate the build which acts as the second player. In this case it's running on the same computer but you can move it to any computer. Uh, Photon will take care of everything for that. So now I launch this build and basically this is my first player as it's a first person avatar you don't see a lot but now when I go back to my editor and I just make it a bit smaller then you will see that I have now two avatars in my scene and you can also see here in the scene that my first person avatar is the headless one while the other players will see the avatar with the head so basically this is it this is the way you can set up networking in an easy way. Uh, starting with a single player game, just add the networking starter and take care of your remote avatar. And then 
you have your multiplayer setup.